Hi, I'm Jamie and in this video we'll be answering some of the questions that you ask us every September. I'm joined by India James from our Wildlife Inquiries team. Hello India. Hello Jamie. So the first question is where have all the birds gone? Uh, people often get in touch don't they and say my garden is now empty, quiet, all the birds have vanished, what's going on there? Yes, it can be quite strange when our gardens go quiet. Um, it's a natural process though, so don't worry about it too much. It's just a natural change in the bird cycle. At this time of year, there can be main, two main reasons for that. So firstly, it's because birds will molt at this time of year after the breeding season is over. It can take several weeks for this process to happen and they're quite vulnerable. So they'll be hiding away from predators and also to avoid territorial disputes. Secondly, there's lots of natural food for them in the wild at the moment, so berries and fruit will be ripening. And if you live close to farmland, then species like house sparrows and finches will all be moving onto fields to feast on the abundance of grain. Um, but what we would recommend is that you just try to leave out a little bit of food in the feeders and that way when they're flying overhead they will notice that the food is there and then your garden will be routinely visited again once they do return. But just make sure to keep the food fresh. Now you mentioned molting there and that does mean some of the birds we see can look a bit odd can't they? Yes some birds can look very unusual. So. Um, birds will be molting from their juvenile plumage into their adult plumage as well at this time of year. Um, this is a gradual process so it can leave them looking quite strange um, and we do get lots of queries where people mistake some species for other birds. So for example we get queries about juvenile blackbirds sometimes. Um, people mistake them for brown-headed cowbirds which are actually um, not native to the UK, they're native to America. So it would be very unlikely for you to see one here. Um, but juvenile blackbirds originally have brown plumage and then they molt into their adult black plumage. Um, and usually the head's the last thing to molt, so they can have black bodies but actually have the brown head which can cause this confusion. It does look very similar to a cowbird, which I think probably visits this country very, very rarely. Um, what I love at this time of year is the starlings. So they've now sort of graduated into their spots, haven't they? They've been brown all summer and then suddenly you see the spots come through and eventually, ready for winter, they're all spotty. That's right. Yes, they can look quite unusual as well. And we do get queries about them because the juvenile plumage is very different to the adult plumage. Are there any other birds people might get confused about? Um, well, there are a variety of different birds that will look quite different, um, even like goldfinches as well, will look, their juvenile plumage is quite different to their adult plumage. That's very true, because this very morning we had one in our garden and they don't have the black and red on the head, do they? It's just brown and we thought it was something, some strange, exotic, exciting species that had landed on our bird table, but no, goldfinches, they have the, the, the black and the white still there in the tail, isn't it? So you still know, especially when you see the parents feeding them, and that's often the way you can tell who, which other birds are they hanging out with. Are they being fed by mum and dad, who are clearly the species that you're, you're looking for? Yes, that's a great way to tell. Finally, this is a really good time of year to put up nest boxes. I've got one, a nice one here. This is a, this is a blue tip one, isn't it? What kind of tips can you give us about putting up our nest boxes? Yes, yeah, so autumn is the perfect time to put up nest boxes. It gives the birds a chance to then find them before the spring. Um, and also with putting them up at this time of year, it allows them to roost on cold nights. Um, and often birds that roost in nest boxes will then nest in them as well. So for tit species, this is an ideal type of nest box with the entrance hole. They're best sighted two to four metres high up a tree or a wall. Um, we recommend facing them between north and east um, to avoid the hot midday sun and the wettest winds um, and not to have too much clutter around the entrance so that they can fly easily in and out. But for birds like robins and wrens, those nest boxes are best sighted below two metres in amongst vegetation um, and then for house sparrows and starlings they're communal nesters so two or three nest boxes about a metre apart up high under the eaves of a house are the best places for those nest boxes. 
Um, generally, birds won't, um, if they're of the same species, they won't nest nearby. So you could put up a few different nest boxes in the garden to attract a variety of different species. So blue tits need to, need to have a bit of space. That's right, yeah. yeah. So species like blue tits would need a bit of space. Um, there are some exceptions like the house sparrows we mentioned. Um, but you could put up a few different nest boxes in the garden to attract a variety of different species. And swift boxes are quite important now, aren't they? Because swifts have lost a lot of the space that they would normally nest. That's right, yeah. Um, that's one of the main reasons for their decline at the moment. So we do need to do all we can to try and help them. And putting up nest boxes is a, is a great way to do that. Thank you. Well, thank you, India, for answering all our questions. And thank you, everyone, for watching.